19 Board of Ed Education meeting. The statement is hereby made that adequate notice of this meeting was given by post and written notice prominently on the bulletin board in the office of the Board of Education, 65 McCampbell Road, Homedale, New Jersey, district's website, and sent to the four district schools. The mailing and or, and or hand delivery of said notice to designated newspapers as Red Park Press, Independent, the PLG, PSG, PSA, PTSO, SAP Presidents, and student representatives to the board, and filing with the clerk of Homedale Township Police Headquarters and Public Library. Meetings of the board are open to the public, and all members of the community should feel free to participate. There will be two opportunities for the public to speak. The first is at the beginning of the meeting for agenda items only, and the second is at the end of the meeting for other items. Any individual desiring to speak shall give his or her name, address, and the group, if any, that is represented. The presentation shall be as brief as possible with no more than three minutes per individual. There are certain matters that may be brought before the board that cannot be immediately addressed in public. Such matters may be referred by the president to a board committee and or the superintendent for consideration and or resolution. The board vests in its president or other presiding officer authority to terminate the remarks of any individual if she deems it in the best interest of those present to do so. We have a roll call, please. Ms. Flynn. Here. Mrs. Bramante. Here. Mr. Sockel. Here. Mrs. Liu. Here. Mr. Reddy. Here. Mrs. Amarani. Here. Mrs. Collins. Here. Mr. Wall. Here. Mr. Foster. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Can you all please rise for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, so the public and all of our people um, we have some microphone issues, so this side of the aisle is where the microphones are working their best, so we're a little disoriented today. Um, and so if, and if anyone is having any difficulty over on the other side, my board members and our students, just raise a hand and let us know, and we'll try to make sure it's being recorded. So please have patience with us. Um, our first presentation tonight is for the All Eastern Honors Chorus. Two of our students participated in this um, prestigious event. And I hope they're here. Excellent. We want to recognize two students um, from our high school vocal music program who were selected to not only be part of the New Jersey All State uh, choirs this year, but represented New Jersey and Homedale High School at the All Eastern um, Conference out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, having attended that conference when I was a music teacher, I know what it's like to be a part of that and, and to be um, part of a, an amazing, huge um, gathering of musicians. And we're incredibly proud of our two musicians who we're here to recognize tonight, um, Elizabeth Kaplan, I believe is um, headed um, to study music at, at college next year. Right, Claire? Congratulations. And um, Mr. Nicholas Bauman, who you might remember from our um, production of Greece this year, right? As Kinnicky? Yeah. Or last year as uh, Conrad Birdie in Bye Bye Birdie. So congratulations to Nicholas. We have another year with you, right? students performing with our choirs on May 21st. 21st. 21st, right at Homedale High School again. Yeah. So join us for a great concert that night. Thank you and congratulations. Staying with our theme of music, um, at this point of the uh, meeting, we're going to have a music technology showcase. Okay, go ahead. Hi everyone, 
I would be, if I could just rewind just a second um, to speak on behalf of Nick and, and Elizabeth and the fantastic work that they've done in our vocal music program. And just to recognize Mr. McCormick, who is here as well, who is our vocal music director, for all that he's done to help them develop their talents. So thank you for the work that you're doing for our students. We appreciate it. Um, I'm also excited because tonight we have Mr. John Coriat, who's our band director, here to present to you about our music technology program. A couple of years ago, HFEE gifted the music department a 24 student music tech lab. And in the music tech lab, students from grades seven to 12 with all levels of musical background have the opportunity to come in the lab and to create digital compositions. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Coriat is here tonight to present some examples to you of the fantastic work that our students are doing in the music lab. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to thank the board and the, uh, Dr. McGarry for inviting me to do this um, demonstration to show you our students' work. I'm going to Okay. Um, so I was asked to do a demonstration for the HFED um, several months back, and I did, I put this little presentation together and I condensed it for today. I was told I had seven minutes. Um, so I have uh, a, a, about 10 songs from students. Um, the good thing about this program, or the interesting thing about our music technology program, and I said this to some of the board members before we came in here, it's for all students. It's for students who have a background in music and for students who have no background in music. So the goal is to get every single student creating music on some sort of level. Um, our first example is, a, is by Len Huang, and I just threw this in last minute. Um, Um, a Music Tech 1 student from last year, Sarah Youssef, she uh, did an arrangement of this song called Honor. <laughs> Sanjana Gupta, a song she had entitled Meadow. I was, the students were giving a simple chord progression in C major and she created this. So I think John is here tonight. I, I forgot to mention all of these uh, songs were created with MIDI keyboards directly into a computer and almost every single part was actually performed by students into each of these songs and they're all original. <laughs> Another uh, song by a student named Alexey Philip from our Music Tech for One Class, um, Moonlight. I'm not sure if um, this student had a background in piano. I think he might have played a little bit of piano. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so we move from our strictly classical music to uh, mixing drum loops with orchestral instruments, sort of like action music for film. Sideshows, sort of like cartoon music. Um, this was a piece Mike McConnell, uh, the piano player in our jazz band, wrote on Halloween. I said, write a scary song, and this is what he came up with. Next, well, we're going to skip this. I promise you we'll come back to Lucas. We're going to see Lucas's video at the end. We had an issue with this um, being embedded into this actual. Okay, okay Gabrielle Thompson, a sound composition. We moved out of um, orchestral music and classical music to more editing and creating electronic sounds and almost like sound um, design for film like effects. <laughs> stuff, sound composition. Lucas is here tonight. Lucas is actually going to go to college for music technology next year at Bowen University. Wrote this uh, blues, almost in the style of Led Zeppelin, hard rock bands. 
um, called Into the Dungeon. Michael's here to play with us. Lucas's Students were given a, um, a blank video with no music whatsoever, and that's what Lucas came up with. So, thank you so much for letting me share this music um, with our students. It's a joy working with them. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm glad to hear that um, people are being, kids are being influenced by Led Zeppelin, too. <laughs> Anyway, we're on to our school uh, district budget for uh, the school year of 2019 and 20. Who's up first? Mike Petruzza? No. no. Oh, okay. Got you again. But he's coming. board members had a chance tonight to visit the music technology lab and I believe they were as impressed with what they saw as with what they heard this evening. Um, that lab ha has been, uh, was a dream of mine for, for ever since I came here and so to, to actually see it realized and to hear what's coming out of that from students who aren't necessarily music kids per se but um, have found a way to create and express themselves digital format is really exciting. Um, so, so good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, it's really a privilege to stand here tonight to represent the good work of many in this room, as well as countless others whose experience and expertise have influenced the drafting of the financial blueprint we're here to discuss tonight. Preparation for tonight's presentation began well um, before this evening, back in November, as the leaders of our schools and all the various departments that support the successful operation of our school district began to assess the expenditures of years gone by and to identify the needs for the future in an effort to innovate to elevate. All faculty, staff, and administrators, in cooperation with the members of the school board who represent the community, as well as parents played important roles in the planning and budget design process. I believe that involving all of these stakeholders in the preparation and implementation of the budget is vital as it really acknowledges the connection and the critical connection that exists between the district's resources and the children we serve. With that said, I'd like to acknowledge those who contributed to the financial blueprint we will discuss tonight, a team of architects who helped to design the proposed budget. First of all, I would like to thank our administrative team for their painstaking review of prior year allocations and for engaging in collaborative assessment of needs um, and efforts to innovate within our needs. 
I want to especially acknowledge three of our principals, Mr. Howard, Mr. Loughran, and Mr. Scalacci, who found themselves this year implementing um, building-based budgets that were new to them and that they themselves had not constructed prior to. I want to thank them for taking a fresh look at expenditures and for proposing a budget for the future without the experience of having lived through a budget year in their new position. So thank you, Mr. Howard, Mr. Loughran, and Mr. Scalacci, who I believe is not with us at the moment. But also thanks to Mrs. Marina, too, for her continued good work in her position. I want to give a special thanks to Dr. Seeley for working with our team to bring forth innovative initiatives in the curriculum. Mr. Gattini for working with the team to imagine a price out technology enhancement. Mr. And Mr. Stromsland and Mr. Rogers for addressing our needs from a buildings and grounds perspective. And of course, uh, Ms. Gill for making sure that we had the funds to provide for our special needs students. I'd also like to acknowledge the diligence of our Budget and Finance Committee, chaired by Mrs. Collins, who has worked with committee members Mrs. Briamonte, Mrs. Flynn, and Mr. Wall. This is my sixth year developing a budget in Homedale, and I can honestly tell you that I have never worked with a BNF co committee with as much financial and legal and mathematical experience as this group of uh, folks that I had the chance to work with on this budget. Thank you for sharing your expertise, and thank you for your continued support. Finally, I want to acknowledge Mr. Patrizzo, our business administrator, who you will hear from shortly, as well as our assistant VA, Ms. Mancuso, and the entire business office for their work on this budget. All right, let's get started. The primary purpose of a school district's budget is to translate the district's mission and our educational goals into dollars and cents. In doing so, our budget protects our brand, as we have come to appreciate, innovate to elevate means we are always aspiring to do more. It means we are always expanding what we do to make aspirations a reality for each individual and for the whole. Aspiring to do more and expanding what we do is in of itself an incredible financial challenge, as you can imagine. As we discuss our proposed budget tonight, I'm confident that what you will hear and what you will see will reflect both our brand and our mission as this budget has been built to allow us to aspire to do more and to expand what we do. Our budget bridges the gap that can exist between our mission, our goals, and the resources we allocate to meeting them. With that in mind, we begin with our mission, which directs our work. In doing so, we acknowledge that in order to create responsible and resourceful citizens and lifelong learners, we must be sure to create an environment that is both comprehensive in terms of equitable opportunities for all students and caring, and I would add safe and secure, so that students can meet and exceed the New Jersey student learning standards. As you can imagine, crafting a budget is filled with challenges, some imposed from the outside, such as meeting state mandates as we will this year by seamlessly adding financial literacy content into grades six to eight, offering more choices in the arts in middle school and high school with the addition of dance and theater, and equipping our schools to meet the requirement of new laws, such as Alyssa's Law, named for uh, one of the students who passed away in the Parkland shooting. Other challenges are driven by the context of our district and previous year goals, or long-term goals, that we have articulated, such as the implementation of full-day kindergarten, maintaining class size guidelines, or protecting and growing our future-ready infrastructure. Still others, such as expanding social and emotional learning supports, are challenges imposed by current goals, such as our current goal related to student wellness. And the enhancement of safety and security, such as our class three officer program and other strategies present budget challenges as well. Increased personnel costs is an annual challenge, but it's even more of a challenge given all that we are trying to do that involves an increase in personnel, as we will talk about tonight. In trying to mitigate the challenges and work towards achieving our goals, we've, over time we've established really five overarching budget goals for each fiscal year we enter. The first is to be respectful to our taxpayers and use the funds that we're afforded to protect their investment in our school district and striving to meet the educational goals that we've set for ourselves. The second is continuing to maintain our focus on 21st century learning and being future ready. In fact, Having this goal front and center for a number of years earned us distinction this year as a school district in which all of our schools have been designated as future ready. 
Our third overarching goal is to make sure that our students have the very best material resources for learning. The fourth reminds us that while we are providing for those resources that support intellectual growth, we also want to be mindful of social and emotional growth as well. And finally, we want to be sure that our schools are safe and secure and well run and maintained. For the upcoming year, we've identified five specific areas of focus. Full day kindergarten implementation, an exciting partnership with Rutgers University Behavioral Healthcare, continuing to apply the class size guidelines we implemented this year that we have already seen as contributing to increased academic growth for our students. Further development of 21st century learning environments with a special focus on learners who will join us for the first year of full day kindergarten, as well as learners in math classes at both SATS and the high school. And our fifth target area will be an exciting reimagining of our over, overall middle school program with a new schedule and a new electives program for grades seven and eight. So what do these goals look like in terms of how we are investing in children's education? When we take a step back and look at the budget from a qualitative standpoint in terms of the investment from either reallocation of prior year allocations and or the modest increase that is proposed, we see four significant areas in which we are planning to invest this year. Personnel, and with that instruction, the arts and athletics, and technology. In terms of personnel, I am thrilled to announce to you that this budget addresses the issue of class size by continuing to allocate funds to apply a standard class size of, um, in K-5 to of 22 per class and 24 in grades three through five. The budget also allows that same standard to be applied to all of our full day kindergarten programs with the addition of several new kindergarten teachers. To continue to promote growth in reading and based upon recent analysis of math data, we have proposed to add an additional literacy coach to our team of interventionists so that reading interventions can be strategically developed based on student data and implemented in a manner that is most effective for each learner who needs an intervention to help them grow as readers and writers. This budget gives us the ability to address mental health and advance our efforts in terms of social and emotional learning <coughs> district-wide by establishing a partner with the School Community Programs Division of the Rutgers University Behavioral Health Care Program. Rutgers will provide us with a full-time advanced mental health clinician with school-based experience and expertise in working with children, families, and schools, moving what, has been, what we have seen as increasing numbers of mental health and crisis assessments from hospital emergency rooms directly into our schools and leaking, linking those assessments directly to behavioral supports, such as individual or group therapies and classroom supports with professional development for staff. This budget also provides for two new positions to support our teachers, child study team members, and students. The first is a 10-month supervisor of instruction who will be focused on preschool through third grade. As anyone can tell you, the role of a primary grade teacher is a complicated one um, with responsibilities for all content areas. I was looking in the back of the room at one of our uh, primary teachers for a little like, acknowledgement on that. While our two content area supervisors will continue to provide ongoing oversight of curricular areas under their charge, the supervisor of P through three instruction will work with them to help our primary teachers effectively cover all content areas and continue to grow our teachers' capacity to use data to drive instruction. The budget also includes a supervisor of special education to assist in effectively addressing the special programmatic needs of a population of students that currently totals well over 400. Research I've done onto the ratio of special education administrators to students with special needs in other districts suggests that our current ratio of one to about 415 is not optimal. For example, Little, Sil Little Silver currently has a ratio of one to 116, while Tinton Falls ratio is one to 150, and Rumson Fairhavens is one to 160. We can and must do better, and this budget provides for that. In the area of instruction, this budget will um, support many new programs and courses and the resources to support them. With so much in the works for next year, I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Seeley for a few moments to share some of the highlights of what this budget accounts for. Good evening, thank you for having me here this evening. I'm just thrilled to be able to present to you all the good things that we have planned. 
none of these would be possible without the support of the Curriculum Instruction Committee that I am so grateful to the board members who serve tirelessly on it. Certainly our meetings would be some evidence toward their commitment to all the initiatives and programs that are happening, and I am very grateful to your support. We also have a great team of administrators and supervisors who are committed. Uh, their first uh, and primary commitment is to the academic achievement, social emotional growth of our students, and so much of what we have planned is evidenced uh, within this budget of their commitment to that end. Uh, Mr. Fallon and uh, Mr. Swenson continue their focus um, in growing our Rutgers partnership, and we have another program that is slated to be written and offered to students, emergency and clinical care at the high school. Additionally, the school administrators at SAT School um, and the enthusiasm of their staff members have developed a wealth of programming opportunities for the students. Innovate to Elevate will certainly be uh, alive and well at the SAT School as there are several new electives that will be offered. Advanced art for those students who might be inclined uh, to want to study deeper. Uh, argument and debate, biotechnology, and mysteries and histories, dance and theater. There's so many programs that will be available across the disciplines and across areas of interest. The middle school year should be exploratory, and this will give our students ample opportunity to explore areas that may be of interest to them. And then it's our hope as they grow to our high school, they'll go ahead and take advantage of our developing career concentration program. They'll get some experience at the middle school level, grow into that, and perhaps have better dedication toward and, and commitment toward what it is that their interests draw them toward. We have uh, so many revised courses that will take place in grades pre-kindergarten through 12th grade. Across the disciplines, we have uh, lots of courses that will be rewritten, uh, including our preschool curriculum. Our kindergarten programs will be extended to full year programs. We've got writing that will happen in math, science, social studies, technology, the arts, um, uh, world languages. We really um, have a wealth of program that will happen. We're very proud of the opportunities that will take place. We have over 40 staff members that will join our supervisors and me in staff development in order to guide them in their curriculum writing uh, prior to the school year getting out and then we will work with them throughout the summer and then present those documents to you, Hope Board of Education, in August. Uh, we, again, thank you for the opportunity that you're giving us to uh, offer these uh, opportunities to our students and we're excited for them. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shuley. It's always wonderful to stand before you after listening to a presentation about a thousand times and see a typographical error. <laughs> this is the level station. Sorry, Mr. Fowler. <laughs> so, um, in the area of, of athletics, the budget allows for us to continue our standard uh, uniform replacement cycle that Mr. Fallon developed since he took on his role. It also accounts for funds to care for and maintain the quality of our new fields and tennis courts. I actually just received a picture today from a, a drone um, of our new uh, softball field, I think it was, and it's stunning. Just wait until we open the fields there. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and in the arts, this budget accounts for all of the curricular initiatives in the arts that Dr. Shealy mentioned, and for resources and staffing to grow the dance and theater programs. Finally, this budget allows for us to invest in and maintain previous investments in our technology infrastructure to be sure that we continue to be future ready with a special focus on kindergarten, as I mentioned earlier, an expansion of our one-to-one -one infrastructure at SAS and the high school, as well as maintenance of what has become a pretty massive infrastructure of Chromebooks throughout the district. So that's the good news about our aspirations for the new year for the children and the young people of Homedale. And now I want to turn things over to Mr. Patrizzo for a discussion of the tax implications, which I really think you will find to be good news as well. Dr. McGarry, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to start, since we're thanking so many people, I would be remiss to also put my thank yous around. I, I definitely want to thank you, our staff and our faculty, our entire administrative team, for all their efforts, uh, the Budget and Finance Committee and the board for their support. Thank you very much. It's, 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 uh, it's, very, it's a detailed 
um, process that's extremely collaborative and time consuming, but um, we, we thank you for all the efforts and support. So with that said, let's get into the numbers. Um, so what's important to go through is uh, really to talk about the impact of this budget we're putting forth and the ultimate cost uh, to the taxpayer. And what's important to break down is, is a lot of people may not be familiar, there's two components in a school district budget that represents the tax impact. You have your, low, your general operating budget, and we'll, I'll touch upon that in a second, and then you have your debt service component of that as well. The combination represents the total tax levy increase. Starting with our general uh, tax levy, what you see there is right now we're, this, this budget puts forth a total tax levy of 55.6 million, an increase of roughly 1.7 million or 3.25%. It's very important to break down how we're getting to that 3.25% because we work in a 2% cap budget. So it's important to demonstrate how that happens. So, so embedded in those numbers, roughly a million seventy-eight is the is the straightforward two percent from year to year increase in tax levy. There are two adjustments that we are eligible for as a district. The first is an adjustment for increase in health costs, and that represents another four hundred four hundred five thousand roughly. And then the last element of an adjustment that we are eligible for that we are utilizing is bank cap, an amount of two hundred seventy thousand. And that number represents a total, that's how we get to our total of $1.7 million, or 3.25%. It is important to talk about bank cap. Because bank cap is, and what that represents is previous year's budgets that we put forth when we were under the 2% cap, you're able to generate those savings and bank it for future year's budgets. So the very definition of bank cap is representing the, the previous years where we were under that threshold. When we were planning for this year and planning for the implementation of the full day kindergarten, we knew the challenge was to have the funding necessary to fund this, not only one year, but prospectively. So that's when you utilize bank cap funds because they're not one-time uses, they're perpetual. It's also important to note this budget is still 610,000 under cap. That's how much bank cap is available for us moving into the 2021 and forward budgets. So that hopefully some background as far as the one component of the overall tax levy. The second piece, you're seeing a decrease in our debt service. And it's important to demonstrate that this is absorbing the new bonds that we're extremely thankful that the community supported when we went out for the referendum and supported the $40.3 million. So, one of the things that we're realizing while we're seeing the savings or the decrease in the debt service component is because we actually had a, more, a, a favorable final interest rate when we issued our bonds. So we realized savings there. And the other component is, is interest that we've been earning on the money while we're going through the construction process. So those savings we're able to and we apply towards tax relief in that component. When you net both of them together, you see a total increase of 2.96%. Okay. So what that equates to is a total tax rate of 1.368. And what that amounts to in actual tax dollars on the average residential assessed value home of 676,000 is $263.93 a year or $21.99 a month. What's important to note is, or for anybody that's interested on in calculating your individual impact, you would simply go to your current tax bill, you would go to your um, tax assessed values, you would take that amount, you divide by 100, because you're taxed on every $100 of assessed value. So you take that amount, divide by 100, multiply by the 1.368, and that will tell you specifically your individual household imp impact as a result of this proposed budget. So with that, as we move into what are the areas that comprise the total operating budget um, of roughly for the school year, a total of 60.6 .6 million in in current expenses, 
there's two slides that will give an overview. There's eight main categories that consume the total operating budget. And I'll run through them. As you can see, it's maybe a little hard to see in the audience. And, and this presentation will be posted to the website. Um, so I'll run through the main categories. It's instruction, the largest. And that's comprised of regular programs, special education, basic skills, bilingual ed, school-sponsored co- and extracurricular activities, and athletics. That comprises instruction, which constitutes roughly $25.1 million. Student support services is the next category. This comprises of health services, speech, OTPT services, related services, child study team guidance, media, library services, and professional development for staff. That represents support student support services are a total of $8.3 million. Tuition for out of district. That's, for tu that's tuition we pay for out of district students for general, special education, private, and county vocational school placements. That, that amounts to $1.3 million. School and central administration, that's exactly that. School and central office services, that's $3.3 million. Operation and maintenance and plant services. That represents custodial, maintenance, ground, security elements within our budget is in that area, and that's $6.4 million. Student transportation services, we are contracted out. That's paying for all of our contracted services providers. That represents $2.8 million. And then personnel services, employee benefits. There's several components that make this up. It's health, it's health benefits, it's FICA, PERS pension, workers' compensation, unemployment and tuition reimbursements. And that total amount comes to 13.1. The sum total of that is $60.6 .6 million, and that represents the current expenditures of the overall operating budget. And the last component of it, and all you can see is you see the current flows forward to the next page. The last component is what we call capital outlay, equipment, facility acquisitions, and construction services. Embedded in these numbers, which total $1.4 million, is equipment that we purchased throughout the district, our MCIA lease payback. And what, it's important to take a moment to talk about that. We have for at least 20 years been participating in the Monmouth County Improvement Authority's capital equipment lease program. And why that's very important, and, and we've been um, very fortunate to work with our county uh, because by going through this uh, consortium, essentially, we're able to purchase, and this, this is our, one of our main funding mechanisms for our technology. We also utilize that for if our building service vehicles or whatnot we need to purchase. But the consistent funding is certainly from the technology side. And the reason why we utilize that, and it's excellent, is because by working with the with Monmouth County Improvement Authority, they, they are able to generate AAA-rated status. So we get excellent interest rates for this equipment. It's very cost-effective to fund it in this mechanism. This area is the payback of that capital lease. And then the other element in, in there is uh, SDA debt service. Essentially what that is is the state charges back to all the districts in the state of New Jersey previous referendum costs that they calculate and generate and push those costs back to the school. That's another component of it. It's important to note the variance from year to year, which is roughly about a, a million dollars, and also is because embedded in this budget is, cap, uh, is transfer from our capital reserves into the capital projects fund of a million dollars. So how the mechanism works is you have to appropriate it and then you'll fund it through our fund, and when we get to revenue, you'll see the other end of it. Essentially what that is, is we develop a capital reserve to be able to ensure that we can, we can pay for everything that we plan to do with the Home Delta 2020 referendum. It gives us that opportunity to ensure if there's additional costs that do raise, if that do amount as a result, we have a capital reserve to be able to account for any additional costs that may come up. So that's that component of it that's also a piece. So the total of that comes to $62.1 million of the total 1920 budget. Okay, the other element of it is the revenue component of how do we fund this operating budget. So we talked about the, the general, the local tax levy on the general side, that's the 55.6 million you referenced before. 
So I'm going to take time to explain the remaining um, uh, revenue sources within the budget. We start with our, you know, our state aid, and we've seen an increase over the last two years, which has been great in our state aid. So from year to year, we saw a roughly $335,000 increase. This was tremendous for us in this year when we were planning for, as we talked about a little bit before, the implementation of the full day kindergarten program. We simply took this aid and used it as tax relief. One way to look at it is if we didn't have this aid, we would have used more of the bank cap we referenced before. Because we had this increase in aid, it lessened what we had to utilize the bank cap. The other element is state aid from extraordinary aid, excuse me, extraordinary aid, extraordinary, um, extraordinary aid is for extraordinary services provided to special service students. Roughly 269,000. The smaller scope is federal aid semi, that's for special education, Medicaid eligible students, and then fund balance at $3 million. It's important to take time, every year I go through the budget, I explain this because fund balance, well, I don't know what that means to some people, that may mean nothing, but what, what fund balance and what you see during the budget process is during this process, we're able to plan and anticipate and plan for additional revenue we may realize or cost savings that we generate in our current year budget, we're able to take those savings and fund a future year budget with that. And that's what you're seeing here. The, the other thing to point out this year is we also have an additional million dollars, and that's that cap reserve I referenced a little while ago. So in that $3 million, a million is the capital reserve. It, you have to, in order to account for it, you have to include it as a revenue and appropriation. It's really a net wash. And that's how the money goes over to our capital projects fund for the referendum. But it's, it's part of that. And the last component is other revenues. And that's made up predominantly of tuition and facility rentals. Tuition, we're able to and we receive other local school district students to participate in our special service program. And we're able to charge and we generate revenue as a result of charging tuition for that. And we also charge tuition for our preschool program. And then the other element of it is we charge and we get re uh, rental income for our facility rentals. And that represents predominantly what is that other revenue. The sum total of that is the $62.1 million. And that's the total composition of our 1920 budget. So hopefully you've gotten a sense of our priorities and our plans for the coming year. Uh, superintendents across the state um, are looking at cutting programs or personnel, and you've probably heard a lot about that in the news. I'm thrilled to be recommending a budget that I believe will have a very positive effect upon the children of our community next year and for years to come. As a school community, we are all driven to innovate in order to elevate each student academically, socially, and emotionally. This budget allows us to continue to do so. There have been few, if any, budgets that since implementation of the state caps on budgets that I have felt this excited about. Because of what it does to support our students and to keep them excelling, I am excited about this budget and the great work ahead as we implement it and all the aspirational benefits it holds for our great district. Please look to our website for more information on our budget. It will be posted tomorrow along with our user-friendly budget, so you can take a look at that. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for that presentation and for maintaining the focus over the last few years. I've had the pleasure to be on budget and finance on and off for the past few years. And I think the focus between the administration district of staff and the committee all together has provided us an ability to present such a great product for our students, for our community, and um, I want to thank you all for all the, your hard work. I really do appreciate it, and I'm excited. I think we all are excited about what's to come in the next school year. Um, does any board members have any questions or comments they would like to share? Um, Mr. Falcon? Um, last week, thank you. Uh, last week uh, marked my ninth year on the school board. And uh, what I'm reminded of when I sit here tonight is 
when I joined the school board in 2010, the community had rejected the school board budget. I believe that was either the second out of three years or the third out of four years. In fact, the budgetary situation of the school district was so moderately dire that I remember as uh, one of the first meetings that I had here was discussing whether or not we were gonna have enough buses for after school activities to get kids away, you know, self-transport the kids. Uh, the incredible difference in nine years uh, from where we were there in 2010 and where we are here in 2019, I think we've all indicated uh, you know, the incredible work by our administration. But as I look at those nine years, the thing that I'm most proud of, I've been in this community for 18 years, so I guess that was my tax year here on the school board, that's pretty scary. Um, but when I moved into this town, I was very surprised that we didn't have full day kindergarten. It, it was the one thing that in many ways shocked me because of the high reputation that the school district has. So tonight, to have the opportunity to be able to vote for a budget that's going to bring all day kindergarten, for me, is a really wonderful moment and almost makes everything about being here on the school board worth it. It's, it's an accomplishment that's extraordinary and again, this didn't happen overnight. This, this occurred because of years of planning, of preparation, so that we could, on this night, be able to institute what I think is just another proud achievement for our school district. So I just wanted to make that point. Anyone else? Okay. Any comments from the public at this point? the website and that doesn't prevent you all from please and the people listening when you go on the website um, take a look at it if you have any questions please send it along um, and we'll make sure it's discussed and Anna did you want to talk I'm sorry go ahead you're up but go ahead um, Anna if you'd like to come up and speak but I was just saying to the people um, listening I if they would like they could um, send us any questions or comments regarding the budget presentation and the information in there um, to uh, the board members and Dr. McGarry and Mr. Trizzo, and we'd be happy to answer them, so. Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, I am Anna Wood, a one Road. Um, I've already reached out to the board prior earlier today regarding the budget, and I would just like to reiterate at this meeting today to fully press on the budget my objection to the uh, recommendation for the position of a supervisor of special services. And at this point, what I'd like to do is just read to you letter that I sent earlier today as I prepared for this. Uh, it has come to my attention that the board has posted a job opening for a supervisor of special services to serve on the director of special services. I have strong objections to this position and would welcome the opportunity to speak with you in this regard. Uh, please send below some of my concerns. Special education services the most developmentally and intellectually fragile and vulnerable children in our community. Yet the quality of services offered in Holmville to the student population has not embraced the spirit of innovation and educational excellence that is expected in the general education population. The past two years have seen improvements in the quality of special education at Cranston High School. These recent improvements were not innovative, but basic components of a free and appropriate education that were desperately needed for many, many years. These improvements can be attributed to strong parent advocacy and the new leadership and oversight provided by Dr. McGarry, Dr. Seeley, Mr. Goldberg, who served, was the interim curriculum and instruction director prior to Dr. Seeley, as well, the, as well as the extensive support provided by Marilyn Bellis and Alicia Kane. I am truly grateful for their efforts, particular to, particularly the placement of special education under CNI under Dr. Seeley's supervision. The Department of Special Services receives one of the highest percentages of district monies, federal, state, local, and Special Olympics, and yet is barely supervised by the board in terms of the best use of the allocation of these funds. The Director of Special Services is one of the highest salaries in the district, more than some building principals in our district, but charged with the oversight of far fewer students, roughly 400. The director is assisted by two secretaries, and the day-to-day -day operations regarding the administration of student services is overseen by case managers, estimated at nine individuals assigned throughout the district. For over eight years, Homedale's current director has been duly employed 
as Homedale's full-time director of special services and as the part-time supervisor of special education for the Beverly City in, Be in Burlington County. Although Beverly City has benefited from Homedale's investment in its employee, at no point has our district attempted to reach a shared services agreement with Beverly City to offset the cost borne solely by the Homedale taxpayers for benefits, professional development, et cetera. Based on the information obtained by the New Jersey Department of Education, uh, the position currently is full-time home bill, receiving a salary, this is uh, last year's school district numbers, $145,708, and in Beverly, $35,466 salary. If our current director of special services is capable of working at two different school districts in the demanding position of caring for the most developmentally and intellectually fragile and vulnerable students of two different communities, then the home bill taxpayers should not be paying for an additional administrative position in this department. There is, however, much investment needed at the front lines of special education in home bill, in particular in the improvement of curricular offerings at Saxena High School for students of intellectual and developmental disability, the improvement of transition and life skill services at Saxena High School, the development of an LLD social studies curriculum at SATS, a reduction in the student case manager ratio, particularly at Village School and Indian Hill, and the improvement of special education related technology district wide. Over the past few years, this board has initiated reviews in areas of significance to the overall health of the district with a focus on the general education student population, including math curricula, science curricula, language arts curricula, athletics curricula, fine arts curricula, the Homedale High School SAT spell schedule, the district website, transportation, buildings and grounds, and school spirit. It is time that the board recognized special education as an area of significance to the overall health of the district. In consideration of all of the above, I'm respectfully requesting that the board table consideration of the hiring of a supervisor of special services and initiate a review of the special services department as part of the district goals for the upcoming school year in order to determine department-wide and district-wide three factors. The best allocation of district monies, federal, state, local, Special Olympics designated for special education. Where improvements, two, where improvements, personnel, curricular, et cetera, are needed. And three, how the spirit of innovation and educational excellence that is expected in the general education population can become a reality for Homedale students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Since the mailing of this letter earlier today, I have received, uh, I think most of you can be surprised that I've received a lot of phone calls and email correspondence in this regard. I really hope that in planning for this budget, in planning for special education in the future, the board seriously takes into consideration my concerns. I appreciate the fact that certain factors are being addressed regarding life skills, but there's a lot more that we can be doing. And most importantly, for me, the focus is the allocation of the monies that are made through this department for the betterment of our the children of our community, especially those who are most fragile intellectually and developmentally. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Any other comments? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the meeting and we're going to move on to the report from our student representative.
from the high school jazz festival will be this Friday, May 3rd, and will feature jazz band performances from Montgomery High School, Red Bank Regional High School, Monmouth Regional High School, J.C. Stevens High School, Pequenock High School, Brunswick Haven High School, Hindal High School, and William R. Taft Middle School. Admission is $5 for students and $8 for adults, so please bring your friends and family to enjoy an evening of jazz that directly benefits the Hindal Band <coughs> program. And finally, juniors are excited for their prom on May 17th and look forward to the release after studying so hard for this week. Last night was the regular prom society matching ceremony, so congratulations to those inducted and great job to all of those who performed. Our spring sports were doing great. Boys tennis is ranked 16th in the state and second in grade two by NJ.com at their April 26th. Softball is ranked 10th in the school conference by NJ.com at their April 24th. And congratulations to freshman Mega Gan on qualifying for the U.S. Women's Open Golf Tournament. in Jamesburg on Tuesday, May 30th. And we all wish Mega the best of luck in the tournament. Time in high school is rapidly dwindling, and we are all reminded of that, as today, May 1st, is National College Decision Day, and seniors in Hendel High School all celebrated by wearing lots of fun attire from the school of their choice, as I did today. <laughs> um, we took a huge class picture during lunch, and even had a big map in the common showing where the class of 2019 will be next year. And I have to say, on a personal level, it was really weird walking around, having seen that for the past four years, and knowing that it was us <laughs> in the, the college press room. I am personally so excited for everyone, and I cannot wait to see all of the awesome things the class of 2019 will undeniably do over the next four years and beyond. Involved, keep in touch, and let us know how well you're all doing as a band across the country. <laughs> so I have a question for the students. Um, with all of the recent coverage of the college admission scandal, how is that being talked about amongst our students? Um, it's certainly very frustrating. <laughs> it's very frustrating, uh, especially coming from a school like Hindell, where we all pour our heart and soul into everything we do. And seeing online that these students are legitimately faking their way into some of the top schools in the country, it's just disheartening to know that this is definitely not the beginning um, and it's definitely not where this scandal has ended. There's so much that has yet to be uncovered and will potentially never be uncovered. And that's just something we have to kind of take with a grain of salt because it's not just college, it's everything in life. You're always going to find people that that sneak their way through and they may feel gratified with what they've gotten in the end, but I know I personally and among my friends would be much happier at an institution that we've worked to get to than something that we pretended to do on our own to to get to and our school didn't have a vote. <laughs> as you approach the process? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with Jess that like it is kind of disappointing to hear that there are people getting into schools without actually doing the work, but I also think that it's nice to know that when you do get into a school that you really deserve it because you did work and you're not doing all these other things that people are doing. So, I mean, although it is disappointing, I guess it just pushes a lot of us to work even harder to make sure that we do deserve the school that we get. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're at the point of the meeting for the report of the superintendent. Good evening again, everybody. <clears throat> In an effort to model learn, uh, leading with gratitude, I'm moving the gratitude portion of my report up to the top, starting with gratitude from Village School. When you visit Village School these days, you can't help but notice the brand new beautiful tree planted this year by the PSA in honor of Arbor Day. Many thanks to the PSA for all they do to beautify Village School while helping the environment at the same time. Our continued thanks to the Indian Hill PLG for their hard work and efforts. They're currently busy planning the annual Career Day celebration in June. 
The PLG also helped to coordinate the tree planting ceremony held at Indian Hill, which featured a poetry reading by our very own Mike Sockle. This year's tree was dedicated to our police and first aid members who expressed gratitude for the recognition they received. Thank you to our SATS PSG for the outstanding luncheon they provided for staff this past Monday in early recognition of what's coming up next week in Teacher Appreciation Week. It was wonderful and tasty by all accounts. Speaking of food, thank you to the high school PTSO for coordinating a wonderful breakfast to celebrate Administrative Professionals Day. And the staff there is also looking forward to the luncheon that's scheduled for Tuesday, May 7th in celebration of Staff Appreciation Day. Finally, thanks to all of you listening to or reading this report, maybe even that person on the cell phone. Your engagement in the work of our district is so important and very much appreciated. As you may have noticed over the last year, I've taken a different approach to reporting on our goals this year, highlighting ongoing efforts throughout the year rather than waiting to give a culminating presentation. I hope this approach has given you a view that is more like a motion picture rather than providing a simple snapshot that a presentation allows. As it relates to what we've been referring to as our student wellness goal, we've begun to explore concepts related to social and emotional learning. Just last night, I met with the Student Wellness Task Force, a wonderful group of Homedale parents who happen to also be mental health and wellness professionals. This group's input, as well as the input of our administrative team, and analysis of relevant data informed my recommendation as shared in our budget presentation to secure a partnership with Rutgers University Behavioral Health Care to provide services to our district in the coming year. Last night, these parents and I discussed the core competencies of social and emotional learning, while earlier in April, I surveyed our staff around FBL. The survey asked staff to, on a scale of one to five, how important they thought SEL was to the success of our students. This question resulted in a mean rating of 4.8 thus indicating that our staff agrees that this, that this is highly important. Interestingly though, almost 70% identified having no specific training in their whole careers related to social and emotional learning. We are already using this finding and data point from this year's goal to develop plans to address this in the coming year. And this will be a topic of discussion when the school safety and climate teams at each school meet this month to collaborate on all things SEL. Meanwhile, the ability to establish, this is a quote, the ability to establish and maintain healthy and rewarding relationships with diverse individuals and groups is one of the core competencies of SEL. The ability to negotiate conflict constructively and seek and offer help when needed is an area that village school counselor, Ms. Barbera, will be working on in collaboration with our teachers through developmentally appropriate lessons in the classroom on relational aggression. Similarly, Indian Hills Counselor Mrs. Jennings will be teaming up with our district school resource officer, John Martin, for a fourth and fifth grade presentation on the topics of bullying, tolerance, and overall appropriate student interactions. They will be role playing with the students and providing meaningful peer mediation techniques and strategies. Our peer leaders program, a joint venture between SATS and high school, reached its conclusion for the year. Mr. DiStefano, Mrs. Finnegan, and Mr. Bruce, our counselors, are anxious to review the feedback from our students about some of the changes we made this year to the program so that they may continue to enhance it. And finally, the district's first mindful cohort of 25 staff members will come together for their final collaborative session on May 21st. The focus will be on the successful implementation of mindful practices in the classroom. That same day, our trainer will also attend a meeting of the Student Wellness Task Force, our parents experts, to share with them a reflection on the work they completed this year. In terms of our efforts to increase the practice of collecting and using accurate data to inform decisions in all aspects of the school district, I'm happy to report that analysis of our spring map results is in full swing. And I'm so pleased to report that across all grades in mathematics, one grade level met their overall growth projection. But I'm beyond ecstatic to report that in six grade levels, we exceeded projections for the year including in fifth grade math, providing us with an assurance that our decision to create enrichment for all resulted in fifth grade math that is paying off. Surprisingly, reading growth results were not as strong with the exception of results in the primary grades where we exceeded growth projections in two of the three grades. Overall, it's important to recognize that all of our mean RIT scores are well above the mean for all, school, all schools in the nation using math. 
We look forward to continuing to analyze results, share them with families, and determine ways to support growth for all students. The Village School Data Team met recently with administration and our Director of Supplemental Services to prepare for upcoming data talks with grade level staff on MAP growth results. Committee members will be responsible for answering and collecting questions regarding MAP as they guide teachers in reviewing quadrant full year growth, quadrant growth winter to spring, and the learning continuum in order to inform instruction. Team members will also be leading staff in the, in the utilization of the university, universal literacy end of year screening tool that's provided by Benchmark Advance for grades one, two, and three. And it'll be used as an additional assistant piece for placements for next year and the cluster grouping of students that we have now begun to do in our elementary grades. <coughs> Excuse me. At Indian Hill, teachers have been using map data and a variety of formative assessments during their center work and small group instruction time to help students identify areas of strength and set personal goals. This has been really exciting to watch students themselves as, as young as fourth graders wrap their hands around their own data and set personal goals based upon their own analysis of their data. <coughs> um, the same data has been used to inform instructional decisions so that teachers can make the most of their 100 minutes each day. Indian Hills data team met this month and is preparing for their final rounds of math data talks. Grade level teams will be given a full day of collaborative time to discuss, analyze, and interpret data from multiple measures. SAP's teachers are also beginning to look at our spring math data while the English teachers in particular um, have wrapped up their year long professional training with our writing consultant this past month. They've been focusing on using standards, notes from one on one writing conferences, and the unit's genre based writing rubric for unit planning. The pro this process showed our teachers how to incorporate formative assessment data when designing instructional units for writing. And at the high school, MAP results have been shared for Algebra 1 students, and the administration will be meeting with these teachers to discuss the data successes we found using MAP for the first time at HHS and ways we may be able to enhance for next year. District-wide, the administration has been meeting with staff for end-of-year reviews, which includes a review of their student growth objectives, which are based upon um, setting um, specific objectives for groups of students over the course of the year. Staffing meetings this spring have also included the review of student achievement data as a component of teacher effectiveness. Map data progress from the fall to winter as well as winter to spring administration cycles was presented to the CNI and, and Special Services Committee following both the winter and spring cycles. And I'm sure as Mrs. Amirati will report to you, you will hear in the, um, in the report this month about a discussion the committee had around our continued commitment to data to support my recommendations for approval to the board. In terms of our goal to establish a network of partnerships with businesses and organizations within our local community and globally, Indian Hill, as I said, is busy planning for their big career day celebration and we hope to cultivate partnerships out of that from parents to our presenters. Um, our students and staff thoroughly enjoy this opportunity as a means to make school community connections. Students who are part of our transitions program at the high school will continue their work at various local businesses as showcased at the last board meeting, we're very fortunate to have so many partnerships that allow our students and local businesses to connect in a way that benefits everyone involved. Our next community partnership meeting will be held on May 17th. Dr. Seely and Mrs. McConnell will also be attending the job fair at Bellworks on May 9th to let businesses there know about our plans for the future of our career concentrations program that I mentioned in response last month to Mayor Hines' question during the public portion of our meeting. And now for some notable accomplishments. A big congratulations goes out to the Indian Hill fifth grade academic bowl team, which competed in the Jackson, New Jersey um, Getz Middle School and won the championship round. They competed against many schools from um, the Monmouth and Ocean County area. The sixth grade team placed fifth, also a great accomplishment. Ishani Singh, a student at Indian Hill, um, scored at the top as a national leader in continental math league competition. And she also placed first in Monmouth County and 10th in New Jersey in the New Jersey Math League competition. The sixth grade team placed 14th in New Jersey out of a very large field of competitors. Congratulations to our Indian Hill uh, April Hornets of the Month for fourth grade, uh, Maya Byredi and Brian Zhu, fifth graders Annika Raj and Eklund Ryan, and sixth graders Claire Liu and Jake Harris. Congratulations to our SAP's academic bowl teams for their strong showing at the annual competition, especially our eighth grade team that finished second overall. 
the HHS Jazz Band, which is under the direction of Mr. Poirier, who we heard from tonight, performed at the Jackson Liberty Jazz Festival and the Princeton Jazz Festival on the same day. At the Jackson Liberty Festival, the band came in first place. They received an award for best trumpet section. Brian Chu received an award for best overall soloist. Alex Sicato and Samir Aramili were recognized with awards for outstanding musicianship. At the Princeton Jazz Festival, the band received the highest rating of superior. They also received awards for best saxophone section, best trumpet section, best rhythm section, and best sight reading. And Brian Chu again received an award for best overall soloist. Sophomores Alex Chen and Shinhan uh, Tang and freshman Antonio Stampanidis were selected to perform as part of the Offshore Symphonic Band, so congratulations to them. Congratulations to our very own Hannah Lin for her performance as a soloist with the Mama Symphony Orchestra here at Lake Fence. Congratulations to Joel Barham, a senior who was recently awarded the Bungalow Foundation's Package of Hope Award of Specialized Art Lessons to nurture his amazing talents. The Bungalow Foundation is a nonprofit organization dedicated to reducing stress and promoting healing through involvement in the arts. Congrats to Joel for his amazing, this amazing honor and to Mrs. Lazar and Mrs. Lagoa for helping him progress in his artwork over his time at the high school. Congratulations to the Homedale High School Science Department as we just received the 2019 Waxman Student Scholars Program approval. The, um, the science educational specialist from Rutgers in her correspondence stated, quote, during the 2019-2020 academic year, we will continue our molecular biology and bioinformatics research investigations with you, Josephine Waha, and the Homedale High School Scholars. Your many contributions and expertise help strengthen our programs, and we look forward to working with you and your students. Congratulations to Joyce Yu, rising a grade 11 student, for her acceptance into the coveted Waxman Student Scholars Program Summer Institute. Um, in high schools across the state, the demands of standardized assessments, including the new, newly named New Jersey Student Learning Assessment, the SAT, the ACT, and the AP can be taxing on our students. In some instances, students put forth their best efforts on those they deem that matter most, and may not perform their best on those that don't really matter um, all that much or anything. This is an issue that students and parents have identified in Homedale. In troubleshooting this issue, one of our student representatives for the Board of Education, who is sitting directly across from me, Jessica Dagatino, um, last year recommended a recognition event to motivate students to perform their best. So uh, we thought this was a great idea, and therefore to recognize all students currently in grades nine through 12 that earned level five scores last year, HHS will host a bagel breakfast in the Lower Commons on Thursday, May 15th, right ahead of the MJ student learning assessment at the high school. A, congratu a congratulatory letter, certificate, and breakfast voucher will be mailed home to those students later this week. Well, that's all for now. We look forward to a great meeting on May 29th when we recognize many of our high school students for their accomplishments this year. We'll be over in the high school auditorium for that meeting. And I wanna close with continuing encouragement to all of our students taking the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment this month. I'm confident that the growth mindset we've developed this year is going to help us shine. Thank you. And um, I also have um, mentioned to you and, and the board has packets this evening and perhaps members of the public picked up a report of student safety data for period one which is from September 2018 and December through uh, December 2018 it um, basically enumerates all of the um, harassment intimidation bullying um, cases that we have um, um, investigated this year um, a comparison over the years from the 2012-13 school year to this year uh, as well as uh, a listing of all of the HIV trainings, the HIV programs that have taken place during that time frame of the year, and then other incidents related to violence, vandalism, substances, and weapons in our schools. Um, and this report will also be posted online um, tomorrow. I also have an enrollment report um, at uh, Village Elementary School. We have 700 students, Indian Hills 761, 
WR Sachs, 523, and Hongdao High School, 960, for a total of 3,029. And lastly, I have um, a new HIV report for the month of April. At the high school, we had one case of HIV um, alleged, and it was found to be substantiated. At William R. Sachs, we had two cases um, um, investigated, and both were found to be substantiated. At Indian Hill School, we had two cases alleged. One was found to be substantiated, and one was found to be unsubstantiated. And at Village School, we had two cases reported, investigated, and both were found to be substantiated. Thank you. Um, can I have a show of hands to accept the superintendent report and the HIV report? Thank you, everyone. Uh, committee reports. Um, I'll start with Suleimanti. Do you have the labor negotiation and personnel report? Um, labor negotiation and personnel committee met on April 17th at 6.30. Um, we have 11 personnel items on the agenda tonight. There are uh, items 17 through 28. Okay, I'll start with uh, Beijing Building Grounds and Safety, met on April 25th at 6.30 p.m. In regards to the Hongdao referendum update, our door replacement at Indian Hill and Village, closeout documentation has been provided to the architect and they are being reviewed for completeness. The gym HVAC project at Sats Indian Hill Old and Village New is officially complete and the district has processed final payment and the contract is now formally closed. Rosie Field Stadium Lighting, closeout documentation has been provided to the architect and are being reviewed for completeness. The roofing replacement project at the high school is officially complete. The district has processed final payment and the contract is now formally closed. Field con uh, reconstruction at Sachs in the high school. Recommencement of outstanding work began on April 3rd with an anticipated pro uh, project completion by the end of May. Interior renovation and exterior site renovation at Indian Hill and Village. The project uh, represents bid package one and was opened on March 20th. The district professionals have reviewed all applicable information and the board will be taking action tonight to award the bid to M&M Construction Company. Exterior site addition and renovations and interior alterations at Sats in the high school. This project represents bid package two and was rebid and opened on April 25th. The district professionals have reviewed all applicable information and the board will be taking action tonight to award the bid to M&M Construction Company. We have some approval of policy and regulations. The committee reviewed policy and regulations 5611, 5612, 5613, and 8461 and recommends approval at tonight's meeting. Acceptance of the Uniform State Memorandum of Agreement, or MOA, between the Education and Law Enforcement Officials, which is on file in the Office of the Superintendent of Schools. The committee reviewed the MOA and recommends approval at tonight's meeting. We also discussed generators with the last power outage that affected the closing of SATs in the high school complex. It allowed us to review our current generators and assess and review the usage in each of our schools. Thank you to Ken Stromsland, Director of Plan Op Operations. He is scheduling a free assessment estimate from an outside consultant who will be able to provide us with an update at the next meeting. 
The date and time of our next meeting is on May 22nd at 5.30 p.m. Curriculum and Instruction Special Services Meeting met on uh, April 26th at 3.15. We had some policy and regulations on the agenda for approval of first reading and final readings. We have approval of out-of-district travel, the district personnel, approval of student trips, which is added on an as-needed basis. Approval of a consultant for Tools of the Mind program, which is our preschool curriculum, professional development. We have approval of donations, acceptance of a non-monetary donation from the Monmouth County Shade Tree Division in the amount of $550. Acceptance of non-monetary donation for the Village School Parents School Association for $300. We have approval of new courses, grades K to 12, standing up to intolerance, profiles and coverage, grades seven and eight. Approval of curriculum writing projects for the 2018-2019 school year, curriculum writing projects for the summer to reflect pacing revisions and ESL instruction modifications. We also have curriculum writing projects for 2019-2020. They will begin this summer and they will include revisions of new courses across the disciplines in preschool through 12th grade. Approval of adoption of curricula for 2018-2019. Approval of curriculum writers. Approval of home bedside instruction services. Under old business, we have uh, CUSAC monitoring. Monitoring, uh, QSAC continues, and I'm sure, thank you guys, much happiness of administration will conclude on May 14th. We have NJSLA testing for 2019, and we, uh, Dr. McGarry informed us of the celebration of the 2018 level fives. Under new business, we have spring math administration, we were presented with the spring math administration summary. The data compared the 2019 winter math and reading projections to the 2019 spring math and reading projections. The summary analysis discussion points are in increased classroom time, heterogeneous cluster grouping, professional development, goal setting with teachers and students, common planning time, and the importance of standard-based instruction and instructional materials. Uh, the needs assessment survey for the 2019-2020 surveys are sent to each school, each of our four schools, to the staff as well uh, to the support staff and to the administrative staff. The surveys drive the professional development offerings and the keynote speaker in the fall. Unified Game Day is scheduled for May 13th with a rain date of May 14th. 14. Yeah. We also have a new club request, the Homedale High School Self-Defense. The mission is to build students' self-confidence and empower them with the skill sets needed to defend themselves and others against physical forms of aggression. At least once a month, they will have a guest speaker from law, law enforcement. The 2019 Waxman Student Scholar Program Homedale High School has received accept acceptance to participate, and uh, the Summer Institute Student Acceptance, Homedale High School has one accepted student. We also had data discussion. The committee has requested again that all curriculum and instruction special services approval items be accompanied with quantitative or qualitative data so that the committee can make sound informed decisions. Items for the good of the order, the committee discussed the importance of our school rankings on public perception of the district. 
Now our next meeting date is May 23rd at 3.15 p.m. I would just remind the board that one of our goals, one of the objectives under our data goals was around creating a data dashboard. Um, that data dashboard was created back in the winter time, as I shared with you in one of my weekend updates. And it has a lot of data included in it, a variety of things from enrollment data to performance data. And I encourage you to, to look at that. And one of the questions I asked was, what other things would you like to see in that data dashboard? So if you would take some time to take a look at that, um, it's in the um, shared team drive of, of the Google Drive. So I would appreciate that, sorry. Committee report.
Number 14, Mr. Sacco, can you please read that? Item number 14, acceptance of non monetary donation from the Monmouth County Machine Street Division. Resolved that the board accepts with gratitude a non monetary donation from the Monmouth County Shade Street Division of Trees and in appreciation of Arbor Day valued at $500. Thank you so much. I have a motion. Move. Discussion? Seeing none, may I have a roll call, please? Ms. Flynn? Yes, thank you so much. Mrs. Briamonte? Thank you, yes. Mr. Sacco? Yes. Mrs. Liu? Yes, thank you. Mr. Eddy? Yes. Mrs. Amarati? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes, thank you. Mr. Wall? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wall, can you please read resolution number 15? Acceptance of non monetary donation from the Village School Parent and School Association. Um, we resolve that the board accepts with gratitude a non monetary donation from the Village School Parent School Association of the tree planted in appreciation of Arbor Day, valued at $300. Thank you. I have a motion, please. Move. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, may I have a roll call, please? Ms. Flynn. Yes, thank you so much. Mrs. Briamonte. Yes, thank you. Mr. Sacco. Yes. Mrs. Liu. Yes, thank you. Mr. Reddy. Yes. Mrs. Amarati. Yes, thank you. Mrs. Collins. Yes, thank you. Mr. Wall. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes, thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Liu, can you please read resolution number 19? with the marker or community victory trails with Maria Valley Cause Grove Del Pendo Township Public Schools with distinction as a teacher and supervisor on community since September 12, 2018 and whereas Councilwoman Bell has always displayed a work ethic that goes beyond and exceeds requirement of the good job. And whereas Ms. Maria Bell has thankfully exuded her greetings with skill and competency. And whereas Ms. Maria Bell has earned the respect of her colleagues 
and coming in to your residence and go up victoria bell has submitted a letter announcing her retirement from the Hongdao township school district effective july 1st 2019. now please for be reassured that the Hongdao township board of education accepts Ms. Marion Bell's retirement with the grace and deep gratitude for her dedication, loyalty, and outstanding service performed and a further extend to Ms. Marion Bell's the best wishes for a happy and healthy retirement. Thank you. I have a motion. So moved. one really hurts, um, you know, having served as, as Maryland's supervisor for two and a half years, um, and the pleasure of serving as her supervisor for two and a half years, she has been an inspiration to me in my career, um, and I just want to say simply, we are a better school district for having had Marilyn Bellis in our midst, um, and it's been sort of a new tradition where I ask her colleagues share a reflection. So today I'm going to read a short reflection um, that um, the president of the Hometown Township Administrators Association shared with me, um, Mr. Arthur Howard. He said, for as long as I've known Marilyn, I can honestly say that she's arguably one of the most well-versed and intelligent people that I've ever come into contact with. To say that she's completely dedicated and committed to students, teaching, and learning is an understatement. Anyone who has worked with her knows firsthand how committed, dedicated, and devoted she is to education and the future of our youth. She is the consummate educator who never hesitates to heroically fight for those things she believes in, especially if it's something good for kids and our district. Her retirement, though well-deserved, is a sad thing and definitely a loss for all of us because I truly believe it will take about 100 lifetimes to find someone to fill her shoes in my eyes, she's just that good. So with a heavy heart, we say farewell and happy retirement to a wonderful woman who has done so much good for our school district. Thank you, Mr. Howard. I'd like to also ask if Dr. Seely, as her current supervisor for the last two years, would like to say a few words. shares her wealth of knowledge with colleagues and staff. She willingly rolls up her sleeve to dig into any worthwhile work on behalf of students. She has an inner strength and proven leadership in the humanities, gifted and talented, that in utilization. I wish I had the privilege of working together longer. I have so much more to learn from Marilyn. I wish her an enjoyable retirement, much health, Yes, um, I can return the honor to her uh, because my daughter was in the Glazer program and her dedication, her passion, her encouragement is just unbelievable for our students. Um, later, she got a chance to become a supervisor. I'm so happy. She could step forward to serve a class history for our students. So it's very difficult to see and very sad to see her name on the list of retirement. I do not want her to go, but I think she 
and I want to go to sketch a, a different line um, and then we will do it we will do the next. Um, but I, I think it's really difficult for me to say yes for you to retire. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much, Miss Kelly. We will see you briefly meet. Thank you. Thank you. I will um, continue to dance. Um, uh, my daughter both had the experience of working with Mrs. Bella in the classroom at a very, very early age at Village. And to this day, they will say that she was definitely one of their favorite teachers in that she made them think and be creative and do things that they really hadn't done up until that point. So, oh, I got my scissors. Um, so for them, and now they're in high school, it is definitely one of the people that they would still talk about to this day. And um, both were clearly disappointed uh, that she will be leaving the district. And uh, they will uh, wish her well, we will wish her well. And um, again, like I said, she was the first. So thank you, Mrs. Bella, for all the time and effort you've given to all the students as well as to Village Girls. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Sergeant? Ms. Flynn. Yes, I wish her well, but wish she would stay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mrs. Grimaldi. Uh, yes, happy retirement. Mr. Sarko. Yes. Mrs. Liu. Congratulations and the best of luck. Resolution number 20, Mr. Zamorati. Sorry, I didn't write. Acceptance of retirement to learning disabilities teacher consultant at Homedale High School, whereas Ms. Doreen S. Cotticelli has served the Homedale Township Public Schools with distinction as a learning disabilities teacher consultant at Homedale High School since September 1st, 2007. And whereas Ms. Doreen S. Cotticelli has always displayed a work ethic that goes beyond the stated requirements of the job. And whereas Ms. Doreen S. Cotticelli has faithfully executed her duties with skill and competency and whereas Ms. Doreen S. Cotticelli has earned the respect of her colleagues and community residents, and whereas Ms. Doreen S. Cotticelli has submitted a letter announcing her retirement from the Homeville Township School District, effective July 1st, 2019. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Homeville Township Board of Education accepts Ms. Doreen S. Cotticelli's retirement with re regret and deep gratitude for her dedication loyalty and outstanding services performed and further extend to Ms. Doreen S. Cotticelli its best wishes for a happy and a healthy retirement. Thank you. Can I have a roll call, please? Oh, no, I didn't. Public comments. Does anyone have any comments or questions? I need a motion to go. That's right. Have a, all right. Sorry. <laughs> I was looking for Dr. Bagari's superintendent report, so I don't always look over his so anyway, um, can I have a motion, please? Move. Public comment. I mean, comments. <laughs> Dr. McGarry. <laughs> so, um, Doreen is another um, person who um, who's a pretty remarkable woman um, who will be missed. Um, and when you think about somebody who goes the extra mile, I always remember we have a um, we have some students in our um, special education um, program who come from uh, districts not near us. And so going the extra mile sometimes uh, for Doreen means um, when children are in crisis and they don't live in Homedale, she will be found um, in places far away from Homedale. And she, I'll never forget her showing up um, to make sure a student was safe. 
as far away as, as Belmar, I believe, at a, at a motel. Um, so she's really been a dedicated uh, person. Um, her colleagues, um, Mr. Lochran says, he will always remember her with fondness. Not only was she a fierce advocate for the students and families under her charge, but she was also a wonderful colleague to work with, knowledgeable, even keeled, and pragmatic. As a case manager, she understood well the delicate balance among student, staff, and parent when working toward the student success. And a colleague and friend, she was always sure to remind people to maintain a proper balance between work and family responsibilities. The Homedale District is losing one of its not so hidden gems. She will be missed. Congratulations. Ms. Gill said, when I think of Doreen, I think of a professional with wit and humor who always makes lemons out of lemonade in both her personal and professional life. Her care and passion for the students she case manages will also be missed. We wish her well as she begins a new chapter of her life filled with fun times with her children, grandchildren, and plenty of yoga. And Mr. Scalacci said that in his short time working with Doreen at Homedale High School, it is obvious she's committed to what is best for children. She's an advocate in many ways for students, families, and colleagues alike. She will be missed greatly, but we wish her the best of times ahead as she takes this next step. Thank you. Anyone else? Do you want to have a roll call, please? Ms. Flynn. Yes, congratulations. Mrs. Briamonte. Yes, you're both here. Thank you for your retirement. Mr. Sackle. Yes. Mrs. Liu. Yes. Mr. Reddy. Yes. Mrs. Amirati. Yes, congratulations. Mrs. Collins. Yes, thank you both for your work. Mr. Wall. Yes, congratulations. Mr. Foster. Yes, congratulations. Motion passes. Congratulations and the best of luck.